I swear, YouTube, this is a toy. What's up, everybody? Graver here, and today, yes, we are going to be taking a look at this. The S200, or as it's better known as, the Fire Red. So... I got this from Monkey Mods recently. Uh, this was, I did purchase this. This was not sent to me. So, as always, this is going to be just me spitballing what I think of this thing. Uh, as with all of my reviews, we will go over the aesthetics, what this is, how it works, take it over to the workbench. I'm not going to open it up, but I will show off some of the more finer details of the pistol and explain why I'm not opening it up when we go to the workbench. And then I will give you my final thoughts on this thing. So, so uh, first and foremost, this is a foam dart firing Springer pistol. It is a. It comes to you as a kit, uh, so you do actually have to assemble a good portion of it. The build of the kit itself, the kit itself wasn't terribly complicated um i did have a couple of issues with the build itself but again i will address that later on when we get the more closer look at it uh the way the pistol works is it is magazine fed so you do have magazines for it these are proprietary magazines to this pistol monkey mods does carry spares of these in plastic also in metal from what i have heard and seen and what monkey mods has even said themselves there are issues with the metal ones but those are also the only ones that are currently in stock so the way it would work is you load up a couple of darts here load it in pull these two little locks or push depress these two little locks here so that you can pull back the slide and then you would prime the blaster now, this has a built-in dart stop when there is a empty magazine in here, very similar to the zinc. The way you would wind up getting past this is that you could push it, but that would I wouldn't recommend it because this has actual a slide lock. So when you're all out and you change your magazine and all that stuff and you're ready to go, you just hit that. You're loaded and you're good to go. Um, the barrel, the front barrel does protrude a bit, so you are able to cover it up completely. So you can deprime by dry firing. Just make sure you cover that hole because if not, this is. I have the upgraded spring in here, and it's it's got some oomph on it, so to speak. So, but that's how it basically works. Now, obviously, I am going to address the elephant in the room yes this does look very real steel especially the color that i got now this does come in four flavors uh you have chocolate vanilla strawberry and water or as they refer to it as sand white pink and transparent so i got this one this was honestly not my first choice in wanting to of color i wanted to get I was ordering the white one, and as I was ordering it, the thing sold out. So, that was interesting. I didn't want the pink one. I wasn't a fan of the transparent one, so I settled for this one. Now, yes, I can repaint this thing if I wanted to, which I may in the future. I'm not 100% sure yet, but for now, I am keeping it as is. Uh, another thing I did want to point out, though, is obviously the lack of orange in the front here. Now, as I showed, some of the barrel does stick out while the barrel is red. Honestly, that's not very much to say, hey, I'm a toy. So, I'm going to just say this, especially if you get this one or the transparent one. Because the transparent one... Most of the internals of this thing are black plastic. The only colored pieces in this blaster, unless you get one of the colored shells, is the barrel, which is also kind of enshrouded when 
you see when you take a look at the internal assembly and the plunger itself and the plunger tube is also red aluminum so yeah honestly just don't be stupid plain and simple just think before you decide to take this out and I will address that more so later on but getting back to how this thing actually works if you are empty and you need to change out your magazines there is a magazine release right here you just press it and it gravity drops right out and it the gravity drop is actually really smooth i really like it it's very nice and this is also all injected molded there is no 3d printing on it so you don't get the you know 3d printed scratchy scratches so it's just it's really nice and honestly yes i just do this for fun sometimes but so yeah that is oh you do get uh it does come with uh built-in iron sights which are actually fiber optic sights which i'll show you when we hit the workbench just more in general but when you look down site you do have a nice uh three dot uh sight picture to work off of so yeah um, I think that basically covers everything that I wanted to go over, so let's just go over to the workbench and take a closer look at this thing. Okay, so here we're going to take a closer look at what I got from Monkey Mods when I ordered this. Uh, you get the box with all of the parts in it, the instruction manual. The blaster and your magazine so your instructions here are in Chinese translated into English for the most part this is a pretty decent translation uh, there are a few things that may or may not um, be a hundred percent accurate in the fact that they call this a percussion machine uh, in the how to use thing, they refer to this as a so, uh, to load soft bombs into the storage. But I mean, overall, you will still get the gist out of it. I mean, I strongly give an A for effort and appreciate that they did translate it into English to begin with. Because if anyone's ever built a uh, Gundam model kit, I mean, those things come from Japan, written in Japanese, and no English is usually found in those. So, but. You will get two sets of springs in here, a light spring and a heavy spring. I have a heavy spring already installed in here. You also get two sets of, well, technically you'd get two sets of catch springs, one that's already installed in here and a spare set for when you do upgrade the spring. I never actually upgraded my springs because I honestly kind of forgot and didn't realize it until after everything was all built and such. Now, one thing I do want to point out, though, is I am not going to be taking this apart on camera. If you do want to see a assembly video for this, I highly recommend going to check out the one from Monkey Mods. I will link it down in the description. It really was a very well done video. It's only about 20 minutes long. It goes through the entire disassembly and reassembly of the pistol itself. Disassembling it takes three minutes. It was like three minutes of the video, and it probably would have been quicker if it wasn't for these two screws and two screws in here, which I will get to in a moment. Um, reassembly was very quick. Uh, they did it in 17 minutes on camera. I took about an hour to put mine together. Uh, reason being is because I got hung up on a couple of things. One was the trigger. Second was the slide release button here. So what happened with the trigger is, and they even mentioned when assembling it, before you put anything into the actual shell, uh, trigger goes in first, which makes total sense because everything basically sits on top of it. The trigger is well designed. I'm not complaining about that because I like the design of it and it's a very comfortable trigger. However, there are no spots either in the pistol or on the trigger assembly that hold onto the trigger springs. So 
if you follow the instructions in the sh in the uh, video that Monkey Mods did, they basically kind of tease the screw. I believe, if I remember correctly, they tease the springs in to where they're supposed to go, and then just kind of lay the trigger on top of it. I was having a lot of difficulties doing it that particular way because the spring would wind up rolling and get stuck under something or I would it would, wouldn't move until I actually put the trigger down and then something would be out of whack so the way I did it was with everything disassembled I put the trigger in first held it down from the back side and then from the front, just kind of slid the springs into place. And the one or two times that I did have to take this apart, that's basically how I put it back together. And it was a whole lot easier than trying to put the springs in, then fit the uh, trigger in place. The other issue I had was the slide lock. And that is, while I appreciate this, and it works and functions exactly how it's supposed to, this thing was a huge pain in the ass. Because, one, it's you can't hold it in place until you're pretty much putting in these pins for final assembly. It's three pieces, two plastic plates, and a very, very tiny and very precise spring that put that, that hold everything together. So... It's more of, it's not so much a, oh, it was tricky like the trigger was. It was just a very, it was just a very difficult piece to hold into place while trying to get everything else together. So what I wound up doing was once I had it all together and I fit it in here, which even just getting it into place was a challenge because this is the second thing you're basically installing. And... Or third, depending on if you actually put this in to hold the trigger in place. But essentially, it's the second or third piece. And if you move it around too much, like if you try and hold it like this so you can lay it flat, you run the risk of knocking a trigger spring out, and then you basically have to start from scratch. So I like it. I appreciate it. But if it could have been like a piece you snap together or kind of at least – you know, this button kind of, like, had, like, in inner rails or something that you could have put in. You could Something could have held it in place while you're trying to assemble it. Would have been a whole lot better. But I'm not an engineer, so on that. So that was the issues that I had putting it together. But honestly, taking it apart a couple of times, it does get a little better. So, closer look at the aesthetics of Blaster, now that we're getting onto it. <laughs> uh, sorry if that was getting a little long-winded, but the plastic itself is actually a pretty nice quality. Um, there's no real details on it, so to speak, other than these little cutouts down in the trigger well. Uh, you do have a rail here for a flashlight attachment if you want to go that route. Also on top here, you do have a spot for an RMR sight, and it even tells you that it takes M3 screws, so there is that. Uh, going back to the whole real steel aspect of pistol, this is actually something I kind of appreciate a little bit, just because I do watch a lot of Airsoft videos, even though I don't do Airsoft, but I appreciate the... Uh, not so much the Easter eggs, but like the quality that goes into it. Like when you get something that's fully licensed, seeing all the proper markings and stuff like that. The fact that they actually went ahead and put markings on this thing, I find quite amusing and appreciate. So on the front of the barrel there, you can briefly see before it went out of focus. It says this takes a 13 by 37 millimeter dart manufactured in China along with the company name right there, and it is on both sides. So I just appreciate that little factoid. So, and as I had mentioned earlier, this is a single 
piece construction, or at least the shell is single is a single piece. So your rubberized grip does wrap all the way around. You do have a seam line here and a little bit of a seam line back here, but you don't have to remove it if you are going to do any kind of maintenance or work on it. So that's not a big issue. The pistol is held together by one, two, three, four, five, uh, five external pins and two screws. And internally, besides the two front screws, which I didn't count in the two screws holding it together, because this is technically part of the front whole barrel uh, breech assembly. I didn't really count those, but the rear breech assembly itself is held together by two more screws, one on each side and a, dub and a double stack pin, kind of similar to this underneath the slide. Uh, you also do have the fire rat nameplate here, which is, I believe, aluminum, because it looks like it was laser etched. You don't have it on the other side, but funny enough, you do have the company logo etched into the rubber on this side of the blaster. But funnily enough, not on this side. So there is no, like, one picture perfect side. It's either you put the side with the corporate logo on it or you put the side on it that says fire rat. So there's that. So, oh, also before I forget, you do have the front sights. Um, again, as I mentioned earlier, there are fiber optic sights. So you can see the green front sight there and on the rear in the rear iron sight, you can see the green fiber optics there as well. So, and these screws here are actually just cosmetic as far as I know of, because these were already installed. I never removed them and I didn't have to remove them for assembly. They really don't serve a function other than just being aesthetic. So that's what those are there for. Now, the magazine release, as mentioned earlier, is uh, right-handed only, so it only works on this side of the blaster. There is no nub on this side, but the other side of the release, which is held together with a Phillips head screw. So, I'm sorry, not a Phillips, a flathead screw. I apologize. It's held together with a flathead screw. So, if you did want to remove that for any reason, you could. I honestly don't foresee why, because there's no real reason to do that. So the magazine itself, um, it's honestly fairly plain Jane, uh, injected molded like everything else, with the, the blaster, uh, it does indicate which way the darts are supposed to go. And this does have a 10 rounds capacity. So I mean, it can hold a good amount of darts. So yeah, that is the close up look at the fire rat. So now I am going to give you my final thoughts. Okay, so my final thoughts on the Fire Rat. I have to say, I do like it. The For what this is, and with a lot of things going for it, despite a bunch of stuff against it, this is still a really, really nice blaster. Uh, I have, like, some pros and cons that I want to kind of go over, I want to touch upon. Um, we'll start off with the pros. First thing is performance. Uh, this thing's actually really quite performing well um or performing quite well if i could speak english properly but yeah this thing i did some testing with it i've been shooting it around the uh shop like all week but i even did throw it over the saturnus just so i can get some numbers for you guys and here they are i did five with the Adventure Force Pro Darts 5 with Max Striker Darts because those are the most easily accessible darts for myself um, and also kind of here stateside a bit. The lowest shot that I had out of here was with a Max Striker Dart. The highest one that I did get was with an Adventure Force Pro Dart, but other than that, they were really on par. So you're hitting about between 130 140 with this thing i would say honestly it's probably an average of 140 with the upgraded spring in here so performance is actually pretty damn good especially for a sidearm now 
the capacity that this actually does hold is really the highest pist highest capacity pistol I actually own now because this is a 10 dart magazine. My Zinx hold seven. My Dart Zone Pro Mark II holds six. I don't own a Gecko, even though I know those use angled angled talon magazines. I don't know why I have so much trouble saying that. But so you can get anywhere from 10 to 15 out of that thing. But those are the angled talon mags. So but with these, 10 isn't bad. 10's actually pretty damn good and actually really good for a sidearm. So there's that. Uh, now, I have not touched upon the price of this all video because I was really saving it for this portion of it because this thing only costs $50. That's honestly really damn good, especially for what you're getting. You're getting a high-performing, tunable, hobby-grade sidearm for $50. Now, if you compare that to other offerings out there, this comes in, this like beats them all out by far. Even if you take into consideration that I paid $20 in shipping on this, so overall this was a $70 purchase, this still beats out something along the lines of, let's say, the Dart Zone Pro Mark II, which sells on Target for $80, and if you have a Target card, I believe it is free shipping and 5% off, but even with that, you're still, like, you're either just on the cusp or you're still more expensive than what this is. So, there is that. Uh, build quality of this thing is super solid. It's injected molded, which honestly does kind of beat out some 3D printed blasters and quality of some blasters, depending on who you get it from. But for the fact that it's injected molded and it's a good solid injection, um, like it's really good solid plastic, that really does add to the quality of it. And again, hitting that price point, it's really good for the price. So, I mean, that's honestly great. Uh, assembly of this, while I did have my gripes with the trigger and the slide lock, overall, qual the uh, assembly really isn't that bad. If you follow the Monkey Mods build guide, uh, watch it a couple of times and then give it a shot yourself while watching it, it's not going to take you very long to put this together. And if you keep it with the low-powered spring that it comes pre-installed with, that's even just like three or four steps less that you have to do to put this together because then it's just trigger that slide breach and then cover and you're done so it doesn't get much simpler than that and also going back to the whole it's all injected molded you don't have to do any kind of fine tuning or filing like you would with possibly a 3d printed kit or your own 3d prints so uh, last thing I wanted to touch upon was actually comfort. This is such a nice pistol to hold. Like, it is very, very comfortable. Now, granted, yes, I do have big meat paws, but, and even with the mag, the in, um, the in grip magazine, it's still a very nice hold. Like, my, it does not feel too overwieldy or too big in my hand, which is really, really nice. Um, I touched upon it before, but even with the mag release right there, I barely feel it while I'm holding the pistol, so that's really, really good. And also, look at all the room in the trigger well here. Like, it is, it, it's just really, really comfortable to use. Now, going into the cons, however, again, you can't get over the real steel aspect of this thing. It is something to definitely take into consideration if you are going to consider purchasing this. And especially with this particular color configuration. And yes, I know I've done it before and I'll do it again. But I could paint this up if I wanted to. Yes, that is obviously a big option, especially for anyone in the hobby. But... It's still the profile of everything. This is something that 
could get somebody in trouble if they are that stupid. Uh, the other thing is the availability of this is actually one of the cons because Monkey Mods is completely sold out of these things. Like, I had my issue of when I was trying to order this that I was ordering a white one. It sold out in the order process, and then I was able to actually get a hold of one of the sand ones. But I even checked their website. The only thing that they have in stock right now is the is the uh, replacement barrel. Everything else is sold out. The blasters, the magazines, the metal uh, fixtures, or the metal replacement parts of it, they're all sold out. So, like, literally, the only thing you could buy right now for this thing is a barrel for monkey mods. So availability is going to be, it's a little hard to keep this thing in stock, probably because of the price of itself. And other YouTubers may have already sung its praises, but I wanted to throw my two cents in. The other con is the mag. A lot of people are going to be annoyed that there is a proprietary magazine for this thing, but it is a sidearm. Like, even if you decided to get something along the lines of a gecko, which does use angled, angled talon magazines, if you don't have any angled talons, you're going to need to buy them anyway. So, you know, unless it's a straight up and down uh, talon mag or katana, you're going to need to buy additional magazines for any pistol that you're going to get. So, I mean, I don't know what else to say on that one. There are those that will be annoyed by the proprietary magazine and will see it as a con. I, myself, I really don't see it as one. So, to me, it's not a con, but to somebody else, it could be. Uh, the other con I will put on here is assembly. And, yes, I know I put that in the pro, ver the pro listing, but... Honestly, that issue that I had with the slide lock and the trigger, it just really irked me that it, like, just little tiny possible changes could have made those things so much easier to put in that it would have been a non-factor. But because they were such a pain in the ass, it was like, I still got to put it in a con. Um, my only other issue with this is, and this is me your mileage may vary on it. I have trouble with worker darts in this thing. Like, I have a bunch of Gen 3 purple darts, and they cause problems with this thing, surprisingly enough. Now, I fired a bunch of different variations through this. I have fired uh, jet darts through it. I have fired cut-down waffles. I've fired bamboos, the Adventure Force Pro, and the Max Striker darts. The Worker Gen 3s were the only ones that were causing either jams in the magazine or jams when actually loading. Other than that, I never had a problem with it. It was always, anytime I had any kind of a feed issue, it was always one of those Worker Darts, and I just don't know why. So, but yeah. Over and all, uh, if you decide to just not listen to me ramble and be like, what do you, what do you think? Um... I honestly really do like this. This is a great hobby blaster, and I recommend it for the hobbyist or the maybe competitive player, uh, but I wouldn't recommend this for a casual player. Like, if you want this to just play around in your backyard or shoot around in your shop or whatever, yeah, go for it, but if you're just like kind of a super stock player or even just a stock player or an HVZ player, I wouldn't recommend it. And honestly, it's not even so much for the whole assembly thing. It's honestly because of the look. Like, if you're going to go and play with your friends in your backyard, like I said, it's fine. This is not something you're going to take to a park. This is not something you're going to take to a college campus for HVZ. Even if they said they would allow it, I would not feel comfortable doing this. Uh, would I take this to Cousins Paintball when uh, the NYCNO or the NJNO are going to be hosting a war there? Yes, I would, because that is a private field. I would be okay with that there. If someone said, hey, don't, 
then yeah, I would be a little annoyed. I put it away, but it is what it is. But I would not feel comfortable enough recommending this for anything that would be in a public setting. So that's where I stand with it. So, and you know what? That's where I'm going to end it for this video. So if you enjoyed the content we put here, please throw us a like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the fire rat, or if you have one, what are your thoughts upon it? Let me know in the comments down below. I love reading them all. And ooh, don't forget to click that little bell icon. Otherwise, you may not know when me and Arlene are doing our silliness here on the channel. And I re remember to renew the P.O. box, so that's good for another year. So if you want to send us a letter or something like that, you know, please feel free. It's down in the description. So, again, thank you all very much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Later.